the transformation. And this was actually part of that. And I didn't get to preach it last time uh, due to the Lord jacking us up in the Holy Ghost. So <laughs> I didn't get to preach it last time or finish it. So this is actually the second part of that. But uh, I, the Lord gave me the title, A New Beginning. And it's more of a prophetic word that he spoke to me and told me that this is where, what he was doing in us. And, and this morning confirmed every bit of it. So uh, this is a new start, a new day for us. And, and it's, it's a process. You know, last time I talked about the transformation, how it's not, it don't just happen. Just because I accept the Lord and, and I plead the blood and don't mean that everything's gone. You can ask the new converts in here. I guarantee you they'll tell you their troubles didn't leave when they came down to the altar. Amen. They still deal with things. We still deal with things every day because it's a process. He works on us. He forms us. He changes us. How? Through his word. He renews our mind and kills these mindsets. Yeah. Amen. And one mindset that he's killing, and I could, because we're hearing a lot of uh, teaching here lately about it or talk about it, is the mindset of poverty. He's breaking that off of us. Amen. Why do you think he's wanting us to give? Because he's want. Brother Eric said it last Wednesday night. He said, I'm going to sow my way into prosperity. Now, prosperity is not, and I hope I can get off of this, but prosperity is not measured by the amount of materialistic goods that I have. You can be broke and penniless and be prosperous. How? Prosperity is being in the perfect will of God. I don't care if you don't have a penny in your bank account. If you are right where God wants you, you are prospering. Amen. So don't get frustrated if you feel that you're not prospering because you don't have any money to give in the offering. Hey, you just walk in obedience to his word. You do what he tells you to do when he tells you to do. And guess what? You're going to prosper. Amen. Amen. Moving on. So it, at last we dealt with the transformation, how is the process, and, and God really he done some inner healing. You know, we talked about how they had to uh, cleanse the, the inner parts of, of the offering, and, and we dealt with how God will do that with us. He'll tear us all apart. And I gave my, my personal testimony uh, on that, but how he tore, us apart, tore me apart and then just began to cleanse me from the inside out. Amen. So now we're, we're going further, and we're going to deal with the new beginning, but... When I, I got to this, uh, we ended, actually, last time with uh, God, we're on the altar, we're being consumed by the fire, and he breathes us in. We're a sweet-smelling savor unto the nostrils of the Lord. And so I ended, that was my last statement, is the Lord is breathing us in. When he breathes us in, we're in him. But there's a second part to that, because the Bible says that if you be in me and my words are in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done why aren't our prayers being answered because we only have one part of that we're covered by church oh we're in god you know we're in god we're wrapped up we know the church lingo uh we're here every service we're, we're faithful we're committed we know how to do the church thing we're just we're just surrounded by the church thing we dress it we talk it we walk it we know how to do all that but when is it going to get in us Amen. When is it going to get in? It's, it's all right for a season just, just to, and uh, Brother Brian, he's a testimony to this because they, they just come into church sitting in the back, not doing anything, you know, but they were faithful to come. They were wrapped up in the church thing, but it hadn't got in them yet. And you know what? Before he even made a trip down to the altar, God delivered him. Why? Because he was just sitting in the atmosphere. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. It, it, it matters the atmosphere that you have set for you. It matters. If you're always in a depressed state, well, no wonder you're not defeating the spirit of depression. If you're constantly murmuring and griping and complaining, guess what? You're not going to have joy. If you're always saying I'm broke, guess what? You're never going to have any money. Well, <laughs> Come on, because whatever you say is what you're going to have. Because whether we want to acknowledge it or not, everything that rolls off this tongue is prophesying to my future. Everything. So the names we call our children, we're prophesying to their, their future. I'm preaching myself on that one. Hello, somebody. My wife back there, amen. And she told me last time I said that, she, we got home. She said, you know you're talking to yourself, right? I said, yes, I know. 
I call my kids morons, you know, we, we do, we get aggravated. What in the, you just acting ignorant, ignorant. Come on. My biggest one, I'm, I, can I step on my own toes for a minute? Let me stand here. My biggest one is how dumb can you be and still breathe? <laughs> Come on, we, do, we use these. We just have these little sayings. Don't look at me like I'm all awful and like y'all never do anything. Y'all judging me back there. Don't judge me. <laughs> Brother Eric tells me that all the time. Don't judge me. Amen. We all do these things. We slip things out and, and, and scream at our kids and, and we holler at them. And, and you know what? We're prophesying to their future. If you want to scream at them, scream a scripture. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, the Bible says to study to be quiet. If your kids are getting on your nerves, say, study to be quiet. <laughs> Let them know. They're working on your last nerve. Tell them. Amen. Amen. You got to scream some scriptures at them. Praise the Lord. There's ways to work around it. Amen. We got, we got to prophesy over their future. We want them to change. Let's change what we speak over them. We want to, I'm preaching. I feel it already. We want to sit there and we want to point at them and say, well, they're just doing this and they're just doing that and they won't mind and they won't listen. Well, hello. If the head is jacked up, the body's going to be just as crippled as the head. It follows the head. Amen. Woo. Pastors don't like that. Preachers don't like to hear that, especially men in households. They don't, you know, Brother Eric had posted that holiness deal and he even hit on the men wearing sweatpants. And I agree with that. My wife will not let me out the house in sweatpants, brother. <laughs> she won't <laughs> because it's inappropriate. Just don't look right. Amen. And he posted that on there, and I mean everybody just shooting their stuff off. They, everybody had, had something to say about it. And, and, you know, I put on there, I was like, well, everybody's just hard on the women. Women got to wear long dresses, and women got to wear long hair. What about the men? All the women clapping now, praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on. And I put on there, I said, us men may not have problems with our dress code, but we have problems making it to work on time. We got problems paying our bills on time. Hello, somebody. We got problems holding down a job. We got problems being faithful. To, come on, I see all the men ministers on TV coming out where they're cheating on their spouses and, and having all these suits filed against them. Well, hello, we've failed. Amen. The men have failed. And then we wonder why ain't nobody else lining up with us and we've lost this next generation. And it's because we failed as men. Let's be hard on the men. Amen. My dad told me when I, me and my wife split up, he said, if there's a problem in your home, it starts with you. He told me that. And I wanted to cuss him up one side and down the other, but I was Holy Ghost filled and couldn't do it. Praise the Lord. I didn't agree with it. But you know what? It's the truth. If something in my home ain't right, everything in my home is fruit from my roots. So if I don't like what I'm producing, I've got to change something in my root system. Woo, I ain't getting no amens, but that's all right. We're going to move on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So when is this going to get in us? When is that change? When are we going to allow this change to come in us and completely transform us? Amen. And that was the question I had. Okay, Lord, you breathe this in. And after, after he dealt with that, he, went, he established the laws of the sacrifice, and then he went straight into the priest. And, and I struggled with this. I said, well, how would you go from one to the next? Just immediately from the sacrifice to dealing with the priest and their portion and, and, and anointing them and, and setting them out in ministry. Uh, how, how, did it, how did it go? What was the steps? And he began to show me this about him breathing us in and 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 then and he put it to me in a weird way because i was hearing a preacher talk about uh on the radio